What's up everybody, a spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Reverse Engineers series. Um, so, one thing, first off, I wanted to get out of the way. Um, I want to wish everybody, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, if you're celebrating that, that is. You know, I never really had to think about that until I started doing YouTube stuff. Most of the time, everybody around me just did. After I started doing YouTube, I started running into more people that weren't always from where I was, so it became a thing. Anyways, moving right along, as you might notice, we're back from the break. Um, and I decided to go ahead and do the reverse engineer on the Europa class carrier from, we mentioned it in the last episode, I think. It was either that or the Space Engineers one, I can't, or the Inspiration episode, I can't remember. Uh, but it got brought up because of its very cool feature of having a vanilla airtight hanger, which is kind of nuts given the size of this hanger. Um, so, uh, we're going to jump in and start tearing the ship apart. First, we're going to look at how it works since we didn't actually end up looking at this one in the Inspiration series. So let's get to it. Okay, so like I said, this is the Europa class carrier, I believe I'm saying that right. Um, it's a fairly cool looking ship on its own, but I honestly have to say that I picked it solely for the hangar and figured if I could find other things that was cool about it, then I would look at that as well. But this hangar though, we need to talk about. So, uh, the first thing I want to do is actually activate it, which, according to the description, I think may only be possible from inside the hangar. Um, it does use, like, scripted, um, timer block type sequences to make it work, and I'm seeing merge blocks and pistons, but I'm very curious how this works because it actually came up in my Let's Build, uh, series that the hangar door normally is restricted to the size of the airtight hangers and it becomes problematic if you have an opening bigger than that and then this ship came along almost to seemingly answer the question that i've been looking for which was could you do it if it wasn't uh within the same dimensions so with that we're going to start off with that and end up dissecting it and if we can figure out how that works fast enough and I feel like we've kind of um, reverse engineered it to an acceptable level, then I'll end up um, looking at the rest of the ship probably. But I do, I will say this is a bit of a weird episode because I primarily am focused on that main feature. Also, you might notice, hopefully, hopefully you'll notice, that the sound is back. <laughs> so that was a bit of a mix-up uh, with OBS that somehow it got disconnected from my headphones that I use and so it was going off of the computer's default sounds which were nothing because it was all coming through my headphones so how that happened I don't know but it basically meant that the last what was it the let's build and the let's play episode had no in-game sound so for that I do apologize um so the bridge is up there, and actually, like I said, we didn't... I'm kind of leaving this in here, this kind of walkthrough, because we didn't end up uh, using this ship in the Inspiration episodes because of the uh, 200th episode special, which, uh, like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a wonky, weird transition, but hopefully we'll make it back to our normal scheduled programming, so to speak. Um... But yeah, so this is kind of the first episode coming back from the holiday break. And uh, so yeah, it might take me a minute to get back in the swing of things and the schedule might be a little bit bumpy. Mostly in terms of what happens in the episodes, not so much with the um, release of them. I think that they'll be released on schedule, I hope. Um, but the, uh, you know, what actually happens and transpires in the episode, ah, that part I don't know about. So there's a couple of things that I want to point out. It looks like this is making use of merge blocks and pistons, as I noted before, but one of the coolest parts about that is that it creates a seal. And what I mean by that is it's it's quite literally airtight while the hangar is closed because the grid merges into one grid. As you can see here, there's no seam. It's, it's 
perfect. But I'm guessing when this stuff gets released and then it's movable, that then we can still see it move around and stuff. But like I said, it's it's a very cool system for this to work. So I was really excited about this. Um, all right, so we have okay, so we have a timer block. It's called open and one that's called closed. Now I would like to take a minute to actually uh, look through those. Now this is one, two, three. I don't know what the differences are other than maybe positioning or sequence, perhaps. So we have hanger vents off. It does depressurize for seven seconds, according to the description. Uh, the hanger lights blink to warn you that it's depressurizing. Aha! And then we have open one, close one, close two, close three. Now that's interesting. So in the open sequence, we have opens and then close. That's odd. What's open one do? Um, hanger merge left turns off, I'm guessing. And the hanger piston left, it looks like it reverses it. And then timer block open two. Okay. Which is merge right off and piston right retract. Now, what does the close do, though? That turns them on and off. So that's odd. Why does this call the... Oh, close stop. I'm a knucklehead. I didn't read the actual. So it stops it from closing. Ah, okay. I get it. Okay. So all it looks like it's really doing is venting the system, waiting for a minute, turning off or flashing the lights, and then turning off the merge blocks and reversing the pistons, as well as disabling the uh, the other sequence of opening and closing. But what I'm most curious about, there it goes. Okay, so it removes that. I don't know how it's set up to wait. Is it? Is there a way to... S That's so cool, though. Like, there's even a gap now that the uh, merge is open. Oh, I see. Okay. Now, that's interesting. There's pistons that retract here, but there's also one here, which I'm guessing raises up as part of the sequence. I didn't see it listed in the sequence, but it's probably part of the sequence somehow. I thought there was also supposed to be a script, but that may have been for another feature. That may not have been for... Let me just double check here. Timer block open and close one. So we don't have any other actions going on. That's what I was checking to make sure there was nothing else happening other than these. So we have a three second delay. I'm not sure if that works for the start or if that's in between each action. So I'm pretty rusty with timer blocks. I think that's a delay between each action. I could be wrong. So again, we have the vent. That's probably depressurize actually, not on and off. It's probably depressurize on. Uh, or toggle, hanger lights, blink toggle, more than likely. Open one, turn off all the close ones. I know I just went through these, but I'm trying to make sure I understand it. Pistons left, so this is a group. Right? Pistons left, okay. So that's a group that gets activated. Now is this a- is the merge blocks or groups too? Ah, they are. Okay. Now. Piston left. So we have one, two, three, four. Inquisitor. Hmm. This may be the one I'm looking for. Or these are. So this is the right set, and this is the left set, and then we have one called an Inquisitor. Now that's interesting to me. So there's four in total, and there's two on each side and one vertical. Interesting. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to set it to close and I'm going to fly up and see if I can see what happens when the merge blocks merge in place. There is one other factor that might be happening. Nope, it goes down and then snaps in. Interesting. What I can't figure out is how they're getting it to basically have this one extend and this one retract at different times, with the exception of the only other thing I see as being possible is if the the piston isn't doing anything at all, but it's the merge block that when it turns on is pulling it down. That's 
also a possibility because it does kind of look like it's tweaked a little bit here. Um, so I don't know what that Inquisitor one is because these are going to be... Okay. Wait a minute. So this is the actual piston head, I think. Wait. Nope. I didn't grab the right thing. I don't know what that is. Um, I don't think I grabbed the right thing anyway. Okay, so what I need to find out... Let's turn all of these on, shall we? Which one are you? Oh, I'm on the wrong side, it looks like. Oh! Now that's interesting. All of the numbered ones are the vertical ones. That's not how I expected that to go. Since they're labeled left and right, that's confusing to me. That's very odd. So if I click this, it's all of these. Eh. And these are... Hmm. So it's more like the left group is vertical, the right group is horizontal. Not really left and right. That's kind of odd. And the reason I say that is because all of the ones labeled piston are attached to the right group and all the ones that are labeled with numbers are attached to the left. But if you'll notice, all of the named ones are the horizontal ones and all the vertical ones are the numbered. So it was probably supposed to be one vertical or two vertical, two horizontal in the left and right group respectively, but that's not really how this is set up, which is kind of interesting. Um, what I'd like to check now that I know that is how this is sequenced. So this is the vent and then that's the one group. Okay, so with that in mind, we could look at this as horizontal is set to retract and then it starts the next sequence, which would turn the merge blocks off or toggle them and then allow the vertical to retract. That makes a lot more sense. Okay. I am far more on board with this now that I understand what I'm looking at. I hope you guys do too. Now the only other part I don't get is the merge block left and right group. I don't know what separates those. Uh, let's just show the left group. Eh, we'll show the right while we're at it, but I'm guessing the same thing has happened here because, yeah. So you can see both of these are set to left. Both these are set to left, and so are these over here. So there's a little bit of a, a confusing labeling thing going on. I don't know if there's a reason for that. I personally can't see a reason why you would do it that way, but maybe the builder has a specific reason that they did it that way. I don't know. But for me to wrap my head around it, hopefully it helps you guys. Um, again, the left group is more like a vertical, and then there's two on each end that's the horizontal. Okay. So yeah. So what it's basically doing is venting the air or setting it to depressurize turning on the blink factor of the lights, turning off, um, which one's first? I think it's the vertical, or maybe it's these. No, those would have to turn off first, and then these are set to reverse, and then these turn off, and then the other ones are set to reverse, is, is how I'm seeing that. I hope that's accurate. Um, it's still really, really cool, though, the way this is done. Now, what I'd like to do, now that I understand the mechanics, um, is... Turn all those off. Um, what I'd like to do is kind of actually look at reconstruct... Not reconstructing, but reverse engineering. So, what actually needs to be here? Um, I'm seeing this blast door block all around the piston on the vertical, which makes sense. There is a ramp here, however, the ramp tip, which surprises me. And then it's making use of armor there, so this has to be elevated. Um, there's also a... Why there's a blast door block on the back end here, I don't really know. 
Uh, but the one thing that I also wanted to check is if I grab these, which are the vertical ones, I wanted to look at uh, what they're set to. So max distance is 3 meters, minimum distance is 2.4, and the velocity is set to 0.5. Um, it looks like the share inertia is set, so I don't think these matter with that set. I could be incorrect on that. I don't work with pistons very often. Um, but so yeah, if you're wanting to kind of replicate this type of system, that's the height that I was looking for, is the vertical ones are set to a 2.4 to a 3 distance. Um, and these guys are at a 1.5 meters per second. Max distance looks like it's capped out, maybe? at 9.8. I don't know if that's maxed or not, and minimum has nothing set. So that's how you'd have to set up your pistons, or relatively similar. What I was looking at is without the like rotor head trick type thing where you put something a little bit higher, how they were getting it elevated, but it looks like that's it. It's set to a minimum of 2.4, and then when they're reversed, it'll go up to 3, which gives us that little gap. And with the merge blocks turned off, the snapping wouldn't pull the armor back down. This is brilliant. This is pretty freaking awesome. So, with that in mind, these pistons don't actually move until this has risen up, I think, if I read the, the um, sequence correctly. And with that in mind, you don't actually have to have all of this be blast doors because this is going to give it the elevation it needs to clear the height, which, like I said, is pretty freaking genius. Now, I notice, I, I guess there's not much of a difference here. This is a blast door edge, not the 2 by one ramp tip. So I don't know if that makes a difference there or not, but the, um, the vertical piston here is surrounded in blast doors, which makes sense because of the reduced collisions for that, so it can actually pull itself down and not break anything here. So that makes sense. Again, not really sure what this is here for, other than to just give it a little bit of an edge color style thing so that there's not a port sitting off to the side. And then it looks to me as though the rest of this is kind of to your flavor. Now granted, if you wanted to make a, a wider or something like that, you would need multiple pistons here, um, which I don't know how that would factor in, but it's possible. It's possible, I suppose. Um, yeah, and then we've got blast doors along the edge. Okay, so the next step that I want to do is, now that we know how this works, and we've kind of dissected it, I'd like to actually open it back up again, and then take a better peek at how the surrounding blocks are set up. Alright, so one more time. Let's open her up. We've got the vents set to depressurize, the lights start blinking, those release pistons were set to raise up, then those turn off and those pull back. Okay, I got it now. I got it. So I don't know what I said before. I was kind of thinking out loud, but the sequence is the vents depressurize, the lights come on, um, the vertical merge blocks here detach. These vertical pistons are set to reverse, so they raise up. And then the side merge blocks detach and the side pistons retract. So that's pretty much the sequence, if I understand it correctly. Now, as to how this is all structured, now they've done it um, a little bit differently here to where you can actually make use of the whole structure. I imagine you could do this where this row here rides along the frame of your structure, so you wouldn't necessarily have to do it this way if you didn't want these ramps here. The curious part that I'm not sure why they're here is this catwalk. This is the part I can't figure out what that's for. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, so this is gonna go out. They're gonna merge basically with these connectors. So it's probably to cover this space right here. 
is what I'm guessing. Um, and they probably had to do it that way because of the piston head, I imagine. They, you can't put another block there where the piston head is, so the catwalk is put there to cover up uh, where the piston head would be when the when the door closes. I get it. Okay. The rest of this is fairly up to you, though. Like, the merge block placement would kind of need to be in a similar spot and things, but as far as the solar panels, lights, all that stuff, that would be a bit more user preference. I don't see anything structurally that would be required for that. Much in the same way that this merge block placement is done. Um, like, this half block here maybe necessary but then there's a regular block right there so I don't know if that would actually matter or not or if it was just done for design but in, as far as I can tell structurally the only thing that would really matter is this over here with the blast door block around the piston maybe the catwalk over the piston head depending on how you structured yours if you had a frame that didn't um, basically if you wanted the frame to be underneath the door right here and not have it open, I don't know that the um, catwalk would be necessary because then this part would have blocks here. So that's more of just a design thing. Um, and then there's blast door block along here where the piston's going to be moving. Um, but yeah, that's freaking brilliant in all honesty. Like that is probably one of the best hangar doors I've ever seen, especially being vanilla. This this build does have a mod, but it's for the gun turrets. It's not actually to do have anything to do with this door. Um, and as far as I can tell, there's no scripting required really for all of this setup. Um, it would just be, like I said, the measurements of the minimum to maximum piston head range or piston range for the verticals, um, whether or not you had a full frame or an open frame here uh, would determine whether or not this catwalk is necessary. I'm guessing, again, this is me taking it apart but not actually building it, so this isn't my design, so I don't know if that would be necessary. If you wanted to be safe, you could put it there anyway. Uh, the one thing that I am a little curious about, I'm trying to see why I'm not getting any collision boxes showing up. That's kind of annoying. Alright, uh, can I do it this way? What I'd like to see is where this catwalk is actually placed. Because it looks like... Okay. Alright, it looks like it's being... Well, I can't quite tell. I'm trying to figure out... I think it's placed on the bottom of the block. I think... That's actually really weird. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's placed on the bottom because it's it looks like it's flush because of the um, extra seam there, I think. I think that's what's going on. And for those of you that don't know, I mean, if you're watching the Reverse Engineers series, I'm sure you've done enough with Space Engineers to know, but just in case there's somebody out there that doesn't know what I'm talking about, basically, this is what I'm talking about. The catwalks can be placed kind of two different ways. You can place them... Um, well, you should be able to go this way. Why it's not? There it goes. You can place them on top of a block, or you can place them, like, next to it, but they can't be both kind of thing. And so you can either have it on the inside of a collision box, like so, or you can have it on the outside of a collision box, like this. And you can see there's a little subtle difference there. So it does kind of matter uh, when you're designing things, which way you're going to them. But, like I said, when you have this extra seam here where the textures aren't connected, it actually makes it look flush even when it's on top of that block, which is actually a cool trick that I didn't know. I didn't know that seam would actually make it look like it's part of the block. So, yeah, those are pl that's got to be placed on the bottom edge of the piston head facing with the collision box facing down. It makes sense because I don't think you could place it any other way, but I wasn't sure if there was any kind of hypergrid stuff going on or something where it got kind of like cheated in, but it wasn't the way you could do it in vanilla. But that's a vanilla way to do it. That's within the game's 
rules, so to speak. But yeah, that looks to be the only part of the structural stuff that really matters, is the surrounding blast door. And I imagine this could even be done to your preferred style as well. I don't know that this really has to be done exactly like this either. So it's definitely something that, quite frankly, I don't know how we haven't seen it before, because it's so simple, but yet brilliant. Um... I'm really impressed by this, in case that wasn't very obvious by my repeated instances of calling it brilliant and genius. Um, but like I said, it's actually really simple. It's using basic piston and merge block behavior. It's not doing anything crazy fancy, but yet it's done so elegantly that it it's like, that's legit. You can do a legitimately large hangar door and still have it be airtight. Arguably more airtight than the... Uh, actual airtight hanger blocks because it's a freaking sealed grid when you're done with it. So that is pretty darn impressive and I've got to admit I'm shamelessly going to admit I'm totally going to rip this off for my own build because this is brilliant. This actually works so well and it's exactly what I was looking for for doing um, essentially if we just took this uh, hangar area and flipped it upside down, we'd have the issue I was dealing with in my Let's Build series, which is a Star Wars Star Destroyer style um, hangar door on the bottom, and the airtight hangar doors would not do. So if we close it, that's just so genius. And then it comes down, and then it snaps in. That's so, That works so well, and it's so smooth. And then the air comes back in, so everything's sealed. You don't... Oh, man. I'm legitimately impressed by this. It takes a lot for vanilla to blow me away, but... Um, yeah, no. Like I, This is what I was talking about right here. This is what that's for. If you did not design your hangar this way this may not be necessary, but because of the way they have it, this would be where the piston head is. Right there. Which also breaks the seal for the airtightness. Um, so that's what that's for. So if you designed your hangar a little bit differently where it didn't have this section and you just had like a door frame around the edge that never really went away, may not be necessary. Now this, on the other hand, I'm gonna delete it. Nothing happens. I wasn't sure if it would do anything with the air or anything. I think that's a style choice. The half block must just be for design, because it didn't do anything to remove it. So that's going to be a style thing. I also really like this touch of putting the actual lights on the merge blocks. That's kind of cool. Not only is it kind of a warning like, hey, these are deactivating, but they're also in a very nice place to put them, too. So yeah. Really, really impressed by that. I love this door and this hangar area so much. Um, I do apologize if you guys wanted to see a bit more of the ship taken apart, because I kind of got obsessed over this, if I'm going to be honest. Um, but like I said, this, this was kind of the main reason that I picked it, was I heard vanilla, large, uh, merge block, airtight hangar door, and I went, Excuse me? What? H how? How? How did you, how does how does one do that? Um, so I kind of mentioned it in the last episode of the Reverse Engineers when I was saying, you know, let me know which ones you guys would want to see. I actually mentioned it of like, if you guys don't want to see this, I'm gonna take this apart in my own time because I gotta know how this is done, uh, and it works really really well. But, yeah, I didn't really end up looking at too much else of the rest of the ship, unfortunately. I mean, we did a brief fly-through, but I didn't really look at much else. Like I said, it, it looked like a fairly standard carrier style. I mean, we've seen a lot of the different... I still like this technique. I've, see, I've been seeing this a lot recently, the half block with the LCD as kind of like a mounting point. I think that's kind of cool. It makes them look less like they're just floating there, which is always a good touch. Yes, I know, I'm grasping at straws pointing out things so that I don't feel like I neglected the rest of the ship. Um, I do kind of also like the industrial feel this has. It has a bit more of a... Ex 
exposed parts kind of look. Oh, this is interesting. This is like legitimately just a window area. When it said observation, I was kind of expecting seats or something, but it's kind of just the lookout point, which is cool. Uh, let's see, anything else that stands out? I think there was something on the exterior I wanted to look at before. And I've gotten myself lost again. Really should come as no surprise to anybody who's a veteran viewer of mine. I actually have a really good sense of direction in real life, and in Space Engineers I get lost in these interiors so hardcore. Oh look, the engine room! <laughs> One perk of getting lost on uh, on my end is you guys get to see more. <laughs> uh, so you wanted to show the whole ship? Nope, just uh, just got lost while trying to find the exit. <laughs> oh wait, we're back on the bridge. We're making progress. I remember the bridge. It's in here somewhere. Wait, this is it. I think we found it. Yay! The exit. Um, I do really like this uh, tac not tactic, this technique that again has been cropping up a lot more frequently of this alternating ramp size thing where you get the tips to the half blocks and then the full ramps to full blocks and it kind of alternates and gives it this cool texture. Um, I really do like that. It, it's a very simple way to add a lot more depth and detail to the build so that's kind of cool. You can see it again here. We've got this kind of ramp alternating height thing. This is kind of cool that uh, as opposed to like modded blocks where you have to or, where you can adjust the thruster damage and all that it's almost like these individual thrusters got their own little pods so they didn't break anything. That's kind of a cool effect. I like it. Um, this is neat too. It's like a wall of what are these called again oxygen farms? okay I always say the wrong thing solar farms, oxygen farm whatever. Um, but yeah, that's a cool place to put the oxygen farms, kind of like a pod arm. I guess also kind of like a wing. That's kind of cool. Uh, this was what I was looking for. What is this for? Other than to look amazing. It gives the clearance for the thrusters. Okay, so it's more oxygen farms over here. There's a random connector with a piston. I guess that's for docking or refueling or something like that. That's kind of cool. It's a neat little effect though on the rest of the ship with the longer battleship kind of look that then it just kind of has like this um, underbelly talon? Ski? I don't really know how you'd describe that. Kind of looks like, uh, could be described as talons maybe. Talons sound cooler than saying it has skis on the bottom of it, so we're gonna go with talons. Um, but yeah. I really like the ship overall. It's pretty cool. And it, like I said, in and of itself, makes for a cool looking carrier. Uh, but this door, it, it's ironic now that I think about it, because as much as I have a trouble finding doors on Space Engineers, like in the Inspiration series, it's, it's kind of uh, ironic that one of the things I'm most blown away by on this build is the door. Go figure. Uh, but with that, I think we're going to wrap things up here for this episode. I do believe the next batch of reverse engineer things should be in the next episode of the Inspiration series, because again, that should be back to normal. Um, the only difference is I kind of skipped the builds that I mentioned in the reverse engineers episode, asking you guys which ones you would want to see, and everybody kind of seemed to pick this one. Um, so... I probably won't feature those builds in the Inspiration episode. I'm just going to kind of move forward with whatever I can find this week. So um, those kind of got lost in the shuffle. We did at least get to feature this one in this series, but the other two kind of got left, even though I intended to use those um, in an Inspiration episode. But in order to kind of keep the flow and the schedule moving smoothly, I just opted to move on with uh, whatever I could find this week. So... With that, it should go back to normal pretty pretty easily, other than I gotta get back in the swing of everything. But uh, with that, we're gonna wrap things up here for this episode. I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.